So first thing for today, just a quick summary of what we talked about last time before we get into some new stuff. Last time we talked about how your uh, kind of junior high version of what you think of and as a picture of an atom was incomplete. It was a little bit oversimplified. We said that atoms have energy levels. That's true. So what your junior high teachers taught you was not false. It was just incomplete. We have different layers of electrons as we move away from the nucleus. But the part where the oversimplification took place was that they don't act like planets working around the sun, uh, moving around the sun. They actually exist in three-dimensional cloud spaces, and those clouds are what we call orbitals. So um, the demo that you guys saw last time where you saw the different bands of light depending on which gas we put in the gas spec tubes, that was because different elements have varying numbers of electrons. And so when you excite those electrons and they move up to a higher energy level, they have different falling down patterns when they go back to their original location. If they're falling back down a great distance, you might see colors like purple, blue, or green. If they're falling down just a small distance, you might see colors like yellow, orange, and red. Uh, the cloud shapes that we talked about, those orbitals, they have different varieties, S, P, D, and F. And those exist in within the energy levels. So off to the side right here, we drew this picture that kind of has, um, shows how those orbitals overlay one another within the energy level. So it's not just planets around the sun, but you might have an S-shaped cloud, a spherical-shaped cloud that's smaller, that would be a 1S, or an S-shaped cloud, spherical, that's a little bit bigger, a 2S. Um, there you might have in that second energy level, you might have P-shaped clouds as well. The Ds don't kick in until you hit energy level 3, and the Fs don't kick in until you hit energy level 4 to accommodate all of those electrons. So what we're going to look at today is something called an electron configuration. And an electron configuration is just a description of where all the electrons are. In an atom. So what we're going to do is repeat this pattern, energy level, orbital type, and then number of electrons in the orbital type. And we're going to repeat that pattern until all of the electrons for your atom are accounted for. So what I want you to do is look at this colored periodic table and I want you to pretend that you work for Ticketmaster, let's say, and uh, someone calls you up and says that they want to buy tickets for the, um, the next sporting event, a next concert, um, something like that, once the world opens back up and we're not in coronavirus mode anymore, right? Um, that they want to attend an event. And so if you think of any event that you have been to in your life where you needed some kind of ticket, um, it might say something like, you're in section G, row 17, seat number 8, something like that, right? So when you walk into the venue, you know approximately where in that venue you're supposed to go, you know how far back from the stage you're supposed to sit, and then left to right, your seats are numbered. I want you to picture the periodic table as being the same way and that the different sections of seats are the S section, the P section, the D section, and the F section. And then um, up at the top here where it says the periodic table right here, picture this as being your stage. And so uh, row one, hydrogen and helium are sitting in the front row, if you want to think about it that way. 
and elements lithium all the way through neon, they're sitting in the second row. So when we think about it that way, as that's the stage, um, hydrogen and helium are kind of like in the best seats in the house because they're in the first row there. So this pattern that we're going to try and figure out, it says energy level, orbital type, and then in tiny little font there next to it, it says number of electrons in that orbital type. That's the pattern that we're going to repeat until all of the electrons for our atom are accounted for. So let's try one example here of an electron configuration. We're gonna do it for nitrogen. So I'm just gonna put my colored periodic table right nearby. We're gonna put it side by side. So we could, um, so I could write nitrogen's electron configuration, but also have a periodic table right nearby. So nitrogen on the periodic table is right here, number seven and nitrogen has seven electrons, right? So I want you to pretend, if you're working for Ticketmaster, let's pretend Mr. or Mrs. Nitrogen calls you up and says, I would like tickets for whatever event they are trying to attend, right? And Mr. or Mrs. Nitrogen is going to need seven seats to, uh, they need to buy seven tickets for this event to give a spot for each one of its seven electrons. So Ticketmaster person says, great, lucky you, Mr. or Mrs. Nitrogen, you're our first caller. Where would you like to sit? And money being no object, wouldn't you wanna sit in the front row if you could? So Mr. or Mrs. Nitrogen says, do you have any seats available in the first row? And lucky Mr. and Mrs. Nitrogen, yes, we do have seats available since you're our first caller. So we have seats in energy level one, right? We're gonna write the energy level first. So energy level one, we have seats available in our S section. Orbital type is next. They're in the S section because they're colored pink right? And Mr. or Mrs. Nitrogen says, that's great. Can we put all seven of my people in the first row? And then the Ticketmaster person says, I'm sorry, we don't have seven seats available in the first row. There's only two seats available in the first row. So Mr. or Mrs. Nitrogen says, that's okay, I'll take them. So the number of electrons that fit in orbital type 1s, we can fit two electrons in the first row. And so I'm going to write that little two. It almost looks like an exponent. Well, we're not done. We haven't given a seat to all of nitrogen's seven electrons, so we have to keep going. Well, if we filled up the first row, wouldn't the next logical place to sit, money being no object, wouldn't that be in the second row? So Mr. or Mrs. Nitrogen says, do you have any seats available then in the second row? Because I still need five more seats. And Ticketmaster says, yes, we do have seats available in the second row. And what we're going to do is fill in order of atomic number. So hydrogen's atomic number was one, helium's number two. So the next spot that we're going to fill, the next seat we're going to fill our seats three and four, where you see lithium and beryllium on the periodic table. They're in the second row. They're in the S section. And we're going to take both seat number three and seat number four. We can fit two electrons in the second energy level in S-shaped clouds. We can't fit more than two in S-shaped clouds because you can see that there's only two columns there that are colored in pink. So Mr. and Mrs. Nitrogen says, okay, so now I have four, four seats, right? I have these two and these two. I have four seats taken care of, but I need to, get take, I need to buy seven seats total do you have any seats still available in the second row? 
and we'd say, yes, we do have seats available in the second row. They're just not in the S section anymore. They're in the P section. We switched colors. If we're gonna fill an order of, numer of atomic number, we're gonna do seats one, then number two, three, four, and then five, six, seven to get over to where nitrogen is. So we have seats in the second row. They're just in the P section. We switched colors. And then to get to nitrogen, wouldn't we need three seats in the P section? This one right here where boron is, this one and this one. We need three seats over there, right? To get to nitrogen, so we would say 2P3. Now, if we add up our total number of electrons, 2 plus 2 plus 3, that means that we have all seven of nitrogen's electrons accounted for. So what does that tell scientists? This is nitrogen's electron configuration right here. So what does that mean when a scientist sees that? It means that nitrogen has seven electrons total. Out of those seven electrons, two of them are in S-shaped clouds in the first energy level. So there's two electrons that go into S-shaped clouds very close to the nucleus. So our, um, let me color like this guy. So an S-shaped cloud is spherical, very close to the nucleus. So we're going to put two electrons in that S-shaped cloud in energy level one, very close to the nucleus. Then we have two electrons in S-shaped clouds. They're just a little bit further away from the nucleus. So still spherical, but just a little bit further away. And then finally, we have three electrons still in the second energy level, but they are in P-shaped clouds. Oops. So maybe something, so P-shaped clouds kind of look like a dumbbell, and they're three different types of P-shaped clouds. So maybe one's here, one's here, and one's here, let's say. So it's a description of where all the electrons are for an 